Welcome to the Treasury Update Podcast, Coffee Break Sessions, presented by Strategic Treasure. The show where we cover foundational topics and core treasury issues in about the same amount of time it takes you to drink your cup of coffee. I'll be your host, Jonathan, media production specialist here at Strategic Treasure. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I'm here with Craig Jeffrey to talk about what are CDs. Welcome to the show, Craig. Thanks, John. I am glad to be here doing another podcast on the Coffee Break series. It's been a while, John. Yeah, it's good to have you back. So let's get into it. What are CDs? CDs, that stands for Certificate of Deposit. These are savings accounts uh, held at banks that provide interest uh, at a lump sum basis after a time certain period. So based on a specific date, they'll provide uh, interest on them. So it's a savings account, a way to earn interest, usually higher interest rate than a regular bank account. Gotcha. And I've heard about this for personal use, but does corporate treasury use CDs? There certainly are uh, corporations who use CDs to uh, increase their yields. It's not extremely common, uh, but it uh, it's certainly used by companies. Sometimes it's uh, used to uh, put money into institutions that meet certain criteria. Other times it's just when there's uh, certain economic conditions and rates where they can uh, earn a higher yield. They put some some money away in CDs uh, to ladder and stagger that. It's it's not typically used by the uh, the billion dollar plus, uh, you know, organizations it's used by, you know, small organizations as a way of increasing yield and maintaining uh, safety of principle. So tell me a little bit about the time frame. Uh, what's the typical duration for a CD term? Most of them you'll see three months to a year. Uh, there's certainly, um, CDs that are out five years, even 10 years. Maybe there's CDs that are longer than that. I'm not really familiar with ones that go beyond 10 years, but these certificate depo- deposits, um, you know, have a have a lifetime, and banks will offer them to help fill in their asset liability match. You know, providing to make sure they have stable funds that are far less likely to move because there's penalties for withdrawing them. I know individuals oftentimes, you know, will buy them out two, three, four, five years. Uh, companies tend to ladder to them or you know, nonprofit institutions tend to buy these in shorter durations, um, you know, oftentimes within two years, sometimes three months, or there's even, you know, one month CDs. Okay. And the main goal is to get interest on the money you're putting in. Yeah. So instead of having the variability of saying rates are going up or down, especially if you don't need the money for a period of time and you want to lock in a particular rate, and this is particularly useful in situations where you have some liability coming due, you have the cash for it. And so you lock in a rate that matches. And so you don't bear the risk of, of rates uh, declining. Uh, you don't realize the benefits of rates go up either, but that is certainly why people do that. Okay. So that's the kind of how it compares to a normal savings account. Yeah. They tend to be much more competitive rates. Like if you go into, they're extremely common in the U.S. If you go into your bank, if you walk in or if you go to the website, they'll offer CD rates. And so they tend to be quite a bit higher than their money market fund rates um, and certainly their savings rates. Savings rates tend to be very, very, very low. Um, And so this is a a vehicle that provides a higher, higher level because they know people are looking to invest it. And so they're not going to be happy with two basis points or five basis points. They're looking for percentages, hundreds of basis points. Okay. And when you walk into your local bank, do they usually say, do you want to CD CDs rates? <laughs> yeah, uh, hopefully not. I don't walk into the <laughs> bank too often, but uh, that uh, that's a pretty good pun. But um, Okay. So uh, can you withdraw your funds at any time? Like if you have a five-year CD, can you pull it out at two years if you have an emergency? Or Yeah, usually you can. Um, that's the the most common uh, setup that you can withdraw them, but there's penalties. Um, and the reason... The reason you're getting a higher yield is because you're giving up liquidity. The bank is gaining, you know, known liquidity for a period of time. And so if you do, you pull out the funds earlier, there's oftentimes, um, you know, direct penalties uh, in the form of, you know, a charge. There's fees that might be assigned to it separate from those. Um, there's certainly a loss of interest. So the the interest that you earn over the end period of time is is removed. The individual stipulations are, are governed by, I think, what the particular CD uh, requirements are, and it's probably governed by additional rules. I don't know what all those, those rules are, but 
when you withdraw it, you definitely lose uh, lose some funds. Okay, so you're just losing what you would profit, or you're probably going to end up with less than what you put in. You you can end up with less than you put in. Um, so you locked it in for a certain rate. You certainly end up with less interest and sometimes no interest. So there's some there's some penalties. The penalties may be more than what you've earned so far in interest, but that really depends. That's where you want to read the fine point on the individual CDs that you're looking at. Okay. Next question is, when when this term comes to an end, what's the best way of renewing and finding new rates when you renew? Yeah, so the, you can have a, a setup at a lot of institutions, a lot of banks allow you to just roll these to the same type of term. If you're doing six months, they'll continue to roll into six six month CDs at whatever the prevailing rate is there. That's usually not recommended. Rates vary quite a bit from one institution to another. And even the same bank will offer different CDs at different rates. The sign in the, the lobby is geared towards those people who tend not to shop. And just like you can get a, a better price on a car if you're shopping online and you do more competitive shopping same thing on cds if you're looking across banks let's say all across the u.s there's not a restriction in most cases of where you bank and so those that are looking more broadly or offering more broadly will offer higher rates than if someone's just walking into the branch and i have money it's easy to move it here maybe it's not that much of a difference but if you have a decent amount of money individually or if you're a corporation you certainly want to you certainly want to get very competitive rates. Um, and there's other concerns too, right? That's the that's the yield portion, but safety is a, another concern too. Anything else to consider when you're shopping for them? Well, I think there's other other items that's probably part of another podcast where we can talk about laddering CDs, uh, brokered CDs. There's a few other considerations there, but one thing for sure is when we say that they're, bank guaranteed, CDs are bank guaranteed. Um, are they FDIC insured in the, in the US, for example? They are up to $250,000 per tax ID and I think 500,000 if you have, let's say uh, you and your spouse or uh, have a CD. If you have a substantial sum of money, um, you can have uh, CDs that go over the amount that's covered by FDIC insurance. And so those are other elements to consider. So if we look at safety, liquidity and yield, you give up some liquidity to increase your yield, uh, but you're always having to uh, consider the safety, uh, safety of the particular bank. And do you have a backstop of FDIC insurance? Gotcha. Well, thanks for your time on this coffee break session. Um, and thanks to one of our listeners, Brian Weeks, for suggesting this topic. Hope you enjoyed the episode. And to the rest of our listeners, uh, tune back in every first and third Thursday of the month, and you'll hear a new episode of the coffee break session. Have a good one. This podcast is provided for informational purposes only, and statements made by Strategic Treasurer LLC on this podcast are not intended as legal, business, consulting, or tax advice. For more information, visit and bookmark strategictreasurer.com.